Democratic analyst Jonathan Harris is with us now, along with Republican National Committee surrogate Mahek Cook, attorney and CEO of the American Frontier Strategies. Uh, to you both, thank you. Uh, Jonathan, let me start with you. What do you make of the defense's argument that Hunter checked no on the box because he was not an addict at the time he was answering that question? Is that a strong defense? Well, I mean, I think that's going to be key. I mean, so much of this case is, is really contingent upon his state of mind. In other words, it's the, the form is asking him. And as the, the defense has pointed out, he had just uh, been out of uh, recovery. He was in recovery. He had just uh, been through a recovery program. So it's, it's a completely fair argument to say that in his mind, he did not feel uh, that he was an addict, that he was a drug user. And so, you know, writing a, you know, in hindsight, looking back, um, you know, may have been a completely different state of mind than the state of mind that he was in at the time. I mean, it's it's interesting, uh, you know, to obviously the elephant in the room is highlighting the difference between the way that uh, Donald Trump's uh, case, federal case played out and, you know, him coming out and attacking the judge and so on and so forth versus this where, you know, nobody's, none of the Democrats, uh, Hunter Biden, nobody's blaming anybody. He said, uh, he came out and said he's fully responsible for his actions. So uh, the, the elephant in the room is kind of the major contrast in the way that uh, the, the two defendants have conducted themselves. But uh, yeah, I think that's going to be key. I think it's going to be key, his state of mind, and, and that he very well may not have seen himself as an addict or a drug user uh, when he filled out that form. Mahek, do Republicans recognize the sensitivity of this case, and do they see an opportunity here or also a very fine line to walk as the case plays out? And, and Hunter Biden admits he was in a very dark time when all of this happened. Is this, um, is this a time to, to look less about scoring political points? Look, I don't think this is about political points today. This is truly about an addict who is, again, lying to the jury, is lying to the American people when he is trying to make the defense strategy that I checked a box, but I wasn't an addict at the time. Again, this is how the Biden crime family operates. They try and either lie to you gaslight you or then invoke emotion. If you want to be emotional, I want the Biden family to be emotional for Lake and Riley and the increase of death because of Biden's open border policy. I find it very interesting that Hunter Biden's trial started the same day that Biden, who said he had no authority to sign an executive order, signed an executive order on the border. So in terms of this case, Marnie, I think it's a slam dunk. There was clearly a wow. felony clearly has a lot of evidence that we are seeing and it's going to unfold. What I don't understand for Hunter Biden is he truly should have pled guilty because then there's no jail time. He could have put his head down. He wouldn't be on trial today and we wouldn't be distracting the American people from the key issues, the economy and border. So this is truly a poor defense strategy. He should plead guilty and work on a sentencing recommendation and guidance. Jonathan, care to respond, well, to, respond to that and the timing of the executive order with this trial? You know, I, I knew, I, I, I had some feeling that I was not going to get the same response from Republicans that tried to make Donald Trump out to be a victim when he paid a porn star hush money that he was cheating on his wife with to keep it from the American people. That's not a Trump crime family, but a person checking a box on a form when he bought a handgun that he never used that's a crime family and then we're spinning this about the border and all kinds of stuff it's just fascinating to me that the son of the president of the united states is on trial for what most people would think is something nobody even cares about there was a plea deal in order that fell apart but no republican is saying oh that's to interfere with the election this is election interference he's a victim but when trump was on trial for a ridiculous conduct federal charges, he was a victim, and it was all political. And I just, I'm scratching my head. I can't quite figure out why they're not jumping to uh, Hunter Biden's defense in the same way that they did Donald Trump. Could it possibly be political or tribal? I'm not sure. Well, I, I'm, I'm cynical. I think everything is political these days. Uh, I want to make sure we leave enough time for some of this decision desk HQ polling. Uh, Mahek, I'll start with you on this. Speaking of the debates, the latest polling indicates that most voters say they intend to watch. So 78% say likely to watch. What are the expectations going into this first debate and how important will it be? 
I think this is a decision day for Biden and Biden voters. You are now seeing article after article come out with Joe Biden's cognitive decline. And remember this Trump trial, which was rigged because you had a biased judge that donated twice to the Biden camp and continued to push the defense and a conviction against President Trump continued to enrage independence and so many people that said, first of all, let's be clear, hush money is not illegal. I have to push back on Jonathan. And morally, you may talk about payments to a porn star, but legally, President Trump made a legal payment to his attorney, who's a serial perjurer. All that evidence, even though we had a conviction that was against us because of a rigged prosecution and the way that D.A. Bragg went against President Trump, you are now going to see in this debate what every single American cares not about. The president. That's Joe Biden's I, cognitive decline, which is continuing. That's Joe Biden's crisis at the border, which has continued. We have 12 million illegal immigrants, 251 known terrorists in our country and our economy. And what Democrats do well and Joe Biden does well is continue continue to push back on corporations. Oh, it's shrinkflation. Well, no, the last time I checked, Joe Biden cut off the Keystone pipeline. He stopped oil and gas drilling. He refused to allow Americans like you and me just go to the gas pump and have our gasoline at 239 or whatever you're paying in your state. Joe Biden has continued to push and gaslight Americans. So he Donald better Trump literally and admitted. He better defend his record because he has nothing to stand on except for to point against President Trump. All right, Jonathan, I'm going to give you the final word on the debate to respond, the importance of it, and if these legal cases are a distraction to the important issues that Americans care about. My, I'm dizzy from all the spin. I don't know how we got from trials to the border to the economy. Wow. Um, number one, Donald Trump is not the president. He's a convict. That's what he is. He is a 34 felony convict Donald Trump, not President Trump. That is very important. I know Republicans love calling him President Trump. He was fired from that job by the American well, people. No, I but think he is a convict. Respect, and you, hold on, heck, let, let Jonathan finish. Let Jonathan finish. Uh, uh, but he, he's a convict. You can call him convict Trump. Now, to be clear, um, Donald Trump admitted to telling oil companies to raise their prices. So if you're upset about gas prices, you might want to review Donald Trump talking at a rally about how he told oil companies to raise their prices. Look, the reality is the debate is going to be important, I think, for some people. I think other people are going to consider this a show that they've already watched before. Um, the polling that you showed shows that the economy is very important, especially to young people. And I know that President Biden is really going to have to go out there and make the case that, look, when Donald Trump was president, he is the worst first jobs president in modern history, and you can't write off 2020 as uh, part of his presidency. He handled COVID horribly. He called it a hoax. He didn't address it. He said it was going to go away on its own, and it caused the economy to collapse again. He had already collapsed the economy in late 2019, early 2020 from his trade war with China, and then it collapsed again because of how horribly he handled COVID. And the economy has been rebuilt. President Biden has added 15 million jobs. Wages are up. GDP is up. The stock market has reached record highs. And it's going to be on President Biden, quite frankly, to make that case to the American people and tell them about the work that he's done. Uh, and, and the fact that when Trump was president, he crashed our economy right, twice. Jonathan, but that's I, on Biden. I got to jump in for time. And I will say that although unemployment is down, a lot of Americans having a tough time. We've had some also similar polling paycheck to paycheck for, for younger Americans right now. Uh, yeah, but that's what, been the case for years. Right. Uh, well, well what I, I appreciate is we've got, we've got an engaged electorate right now, and they're going to be watching this debate, and they're going to be voting come November. I'm out of time, but come back. Jonathan Harris and Matt Cook, uh, thank you both. Sure thing.